So my job is to talk to you about bringing together and sharing research from early phase trials and why we might want to do that and then how we might do it. And my name is Jess Morgan. As Bob says, I'm the Deputy Director of the Chemical Lighters Supportive Care Research Centre. But that's not what I'm talking about today. This is another day of my life. Um, and I'm also a consultant at Leeds Children's that way, I think. We're somewhere in the university, okay? So probably your first question here is what on earth are early phase trials, Jess? What are you talking about? Well, I've got a few things to tell you about them. Early phase trials are about trying to understand new drugs or new combinations of drugs, trying to test out these new things, maybe for the first time in humans or the first time in children, because as Bob says, adults are sort of big children, but children aren't necessarily little adults. And what these trials are trying to do is look at safety. They're not trying to see does the drug work against the cancer. They're looking at, is it safe to give this? What side effects do people get? What's the right dose? They're not trying to answer that question of, does this drug make the cancer go away? And because their question is that, they can recruit very small numbers of people. You know, we, we've already talked about doxorubicin, for example. You don't have to give many people doxorubicin to get a sore mouth, okay? And so you just, in an early phase trial, want a few people to try out the drug with. Really small numbers, not the numbers you would need to find out if the treatment is effective at treating the cancer. And because these trials are trying to find out, does a new treatment work? Does it have any safety signals? It's not usually the thing we reach for first, because thankfully in lots of types of cancer, we have some treatments that we think give people a reasonable chance, sometimes a very good chance, sometimes sadly not as good as we would want. But we have treatments that in the past have been the best option. And so, ethically, we offer the best thing we have first. And that often means that for early phase trials, the people who are invited to take part are those who are in a more difficult situation where their tumour has come back or where it hasn't responded as we would hope. And this is a group who naturally have a, a poorer prognosis. And that's important to know when you think about these studies. They're a specific group of children and young people. And the final concept I want to introduce you to in early phase trials is something called a basket. Okay, imagine the one that Ben was sitting in earlier. Okay, a trial like a basket. And um, for this, you've got to know that they're looking for safety signals and they need small numbers of quite a rare situation, okay? So they might try their drug in children and young people with lots of different kinds of cancer because we're not looking at whether it works to cure the cancer, we're looking at is it safe to give. So you might have a few people with one condition, a few people with another, a few people with another, all captured in a basket trial to answer the question of, is this drug safe? Okay? So now we know what an early phase trial is. And often when we're talking about these, particularly in our jobs as clinicians, early phase trials come up when right at the centre of a discussion is a young person and their family, as well as the professionals who care for them. And they're often in a really difficult place. The cancer has come back, or it hasn't responded as we wanted it to. And often we're talking about a range of options. We're saying, 
or we could do more aggressive chemotherapy. Really aggressive stuff. Or we could use chemotherapy drugs we've known for a long time to try and hold things, to control this disease for as long as we can. We can focus on comfort care, letting this young person do what they want to do. Or we can start to think about experimental treatments and these early phase trials. Now, I've been in this area a little while. I know it doesn't look like it. Okay. But in my clinical world, my research world, I've met a number of families who tell me in this situation, the first thing they do is Google. They go and they want to find all the information, every trial possible. They want to know what is out there. They want to find the treatment for their child or young person and they want to make the right decision. I get that. And maybe having researchers who could bring together all of that information, who could help families to understand about what's happening, who could pull apart in those baskets, could look in and find the ones with the right kind of tumour, and maybe help people to make those decisions about what's really important to families which isn't necessarily the safety signals, and it's maybe a bit more, how does this work in treating the cancer? So now we've got the research problem, yeah? What method should we use, and how should we find out the answer? Well, I want you to think about patchwork blankets, shout out to any armies, but if you are not, somebody who spends their time making little patchwork squares. You know, you might, you don't need to know here about knitting or crocheting. Knitting two needles, crocheting one. I've taught Bob one thing in my whole career and it's that. Okay, so imagine you want to make a patchwork blanket. The first thing you need to do is find the right patches. They need to be the right size, the right colour. Are you going to be all pink? Or blue, a lovely rainbow, and then you need to look at those patches. Are they good? Have they got holes in them? Are they going to fall apart when you finally snuggle down underneath that blanket? So you find everything and you assess, is it good? And then once you've done that, you sew it up all together in the right pattern and you've got your patchwork blanket. Well, really, in the research world, what we do is sewing patchwork blankets. They're actually called systematic reviews, but stick with me. This amazing infographic was made by one of our incredible research fellows, and it tells you the six steps that we do in our research. First of all, in the area we're interested in, we go out and we find all the studies of the right type the right design, just the right patches. Are they big enough? Have they got the right children in them? And then we look at them in detail, we select the right ones. This is like picking up, for example, a basket study, looking in the basket and going, yep, that one has got two children with the thing we're interested in. That's it, we're interested in that study. Or, nope, none of that disease in this basket put it to one side, that's not for today. And then we move on and in all of the includes, we extract what's relevant. We find those two children in that basket and look at what happened to them, what happened to their disease. When they were given that drug, what went on? And we check the quality of the studies. Now, I don't know if any of you have tried to read research studies. Tricky, yeah? Our researchers are trained, they use special tools and they spend years learning how to tell what's a good study and what's a study with holes in it. What might be trustworthy or what might not quite have got to the truth. So we do that work. And then we combine them together and we share our findings. Really simple, right? Well, except that I'm not quite sure a patchwork 
is the complete analogy here. I mean, it's got some of the elements finding, checking it out, sewing it together. But what it doesn't quite capture is something where I want you to think about a puzzle. And this is a puzzle that's being made in a factory that's not quite getting it right. In this factory, some of the pieces aren't being made and there are gaps in the puzzles, things that we don't know, bits where we haven't got the pieces. And also, there are bits where there are duplicates. We have got enough pieces of blue sky. Stop making blue sky. Okay, we've covered that. And our job as systematic reviewers is to look at the whole puzzle in an area and say, here are the gaps to research funders and to researchers themselves. Here's a gap that you need to fill. But also, we've got that bit covered. Stop doing research in areas where we've got multiples. And because we're the people going out and finding all the different pieces, we can say where the gaps are and where the duplicates are. And so, flipping through many pages of my notes, after we've done the work of patchworking and of puzzling, it's really important that we share what we found with the people who need it. And that might be patients and families making really difficult decisions and healthcare professionals who are supporting them in those decisions. And it's really important we do that in a way that works for everyone. And so in our team, we've been working with families and with professionals, with researchers and research funders to think about, can we make an online resource, a place where people can go to get all the information found together, assessed for whether it's any good, and sewn up to tell you what the right choices might be in your situation when you're trying to make a decision about early phase trials. So, we're doing that in a project called Reforms. And Reforms is all about children and young people with rhabdomyosarcoma. I was going to say that's a rare form of childhood soft tissue sarcoma that you might not have heard of, but every single one of you has heard of it because you've met them. So that's the work we're doing, but we also want to explore, is this something that we can do for other children and young people, for other diseases? Would this be something that every family in a difficult situation where the disease has not responded or it's come back, where they could go to find out what's been done and what's still going on? 